All right, guys, I'm going to do something that might be a little bit unusual today. I want to take a look and see what kind of acceleration and pace ratings you should expect to get from young players and what types of ratings are really unusual. So we're going to look just at my under-19 team. I've been signing players left and right who have what I consider to be fairly good pace and acceleration scores, and um, we'll sort of see where we get with this. Now, the important thing to think about is not the attacking players as we're about to see in a second, but rather players who play um, as defenders, especially any players who are center backs or who are defensive midfielders. If you remember we were talking about before, uh, on websites like FM Arena, there's been all sorts of talk about how pace and acceleration are broken in the match engine. But what they don't say very loudly is the fact that the match engine um, does not expect you to have players who are like, I don't know, uh, central defenders um, who are center backs and the like who have really high levels of pace and acceleration. Here, I'll show you what it is that I mean. So we'll go take a look at this. Again, apologies for the background. Um, I've tried to make this so it's a little bit easier to read and a little bit easier to see. We're going to keep um, this uh, uh, list here a little bit long because we're going to look at a couple of players in different types of positions, which is why I've kind of cropped it the way that I have. Have. This is looking just at players who are playing as attacking midfielders here on the under-19s team. As you can see here, it's not that unusual to have players who have pace of 15, 14, even 16. I would say that for a team like this, any uh, player that's got like a 14 or above for pace and acceleration that's this young, it's probably going to be a good signing if they're and if they're uh, if they are a winger. When we look at strikers, this is where we're going to see a huge amount because we have a lot of players in this team that can play as striker. And you can see, again, a whole ton of players who have pace and acceleration ratings of around 16, even 17. Some of these guys are a little bit older, but you're seeing a lot of 16, 15-year-olds that have that type of ability. And as you can uh, anticipate, most of them are worth a lot of money. Some of them, though, not necessarily. Charles Otavi, for example, who's at the head of this list, is uh, not worth more than Patrick Fernandez, even though I would say Otavi probably has better uh, potential to be a great player, especially with the model citizen personality. If you've done your research, you've done your reading, you know that it's high amounts of professionalism and ambition as well as determination that are really important when it comes to how players develop. So somebody like Otavi probably will be able to end up on our first team in the end, whereas some of these other guys on this list who may be worth more money at the time, like say uh, this one right here, Li Jiang, is prob they're probably not going to quite make it. They don't quite have that personality. They don't quite have that potential. Right. This is for the strikers, right? So strikers, you're used to seeing guys, maybe the best will have 16 or 15 for pace. Acceleration as high as 17, as we can see right there. Remember, we saw something similar for the um, attacking midfielders. Now, when we go look at defenders, this is um, looking, uh, we're going to look at guys on the wings. Uh, guys on the uh, left and right side, there we go. You'll see we still have some guys who are fast, maybe 16 for pace, 16 acceleration from Samuel Kaplan at 16 years old. I mean, he's already a superstar, right? Um, but not everybody's quite up there. Here, still here, you'll see a lot of good performance from guys who have maybe 13 for pace and acceleration because you remember they can um, make progress and they can move up. Now, we're going to look here instead at center backs and we'll see that things are quite different. Right. I haven't been able to find anybody better than a Joao Fidalgo, who's like a once-in-a-lifetime type talent, a center back who's this fast. Right, Most of the center backs I've been able to find will have a pace of around 13, acceleration about 14. That's about the maximum I would expect from a newly generated player and football manager. Right, It still is the sort of player, if you see somebody who's that fast as a center back, it's the sort of player you should sign right away. But, you know, you're, you can't go into this expecting that your center backs are going to be as fast as your wingers. All right, we'll take a look at defensive midfielders, and we see the same thing. For defensive midfielders, it's really hard to find anybody who's young who has pace and acceleration of more than 12. And so that's kind of got to be where your cutoff is, right? Again, for the sake of comparison, we look here at our wingers on the side. There we go. We'll see a bunch of guys who have 16, 16, 16 pace, maybe 15 and all this stuff. And it makes sense when you think about it, right? Because if you're a really, really fast player and you're playing football, you're probably going to be a striker or you're probably going to be a winger. You're probably not going to say, I want to be in back and I want to, you know, muscle around with guys and try to head the ball away. This is the reason why in Football Manager that uh, pace and acceleration for guys in the back is just so, like, 
completely incredibly overpowered if you get guys in the back who have pace and acceleration of oh, more than 16 or 17 you've got like you know the fastest possible defender in the world and assuming that he's not a complete you know like idiot when it comes to the other parts of his position he's going to run circles around everybody else now you've seen it if you've watched a lot of highlights or played a lot of the game yourself these are the defenders who are able to run back around the uh, attacking offense to uh, prevent any sort of counter attack from playing taking place these are the guys who are going to go back and who are going to be able to help your keeper out who are going to be able to do all sorts of sort of miraculous things in the back because they're faster than the strikers right it's really really rare to get a player like that but the cool thing in football manager is that you can train players to be that fast and if you can find a player who plays at that position who's got a really good personality and who appears to have a uh, potential ability range that's far above the current ability you can train him to be really fast that's the cool thing about the game so there you have it that's what i'd recommend doing again if you're looking at players to sign for strikers and wingers maybe guys with about 14 pace and acceleration maybe bumping into 15 is fine same thing for you know your fullbacks maybe 13 14 is fine but for center backs and defensive midfielders you've got to be more realistic you're looking at guys who are like maybe an 11 or a 12 that's probably going to be the best you can get you probably want to focus on guys who have good heading ability and guys who have really good personalities because those are the guys who are more likely to uh, develop into the sort of players you're looking for so there you go. Hopefully that's at least somewhat helpful for you. And I will talk with you again later. Bye-bye.